Hello students and welcome back to your English literature class. In your previous session you had done proposal writing. Today we are going to do a beautiful poem by Matthew Arnold, Dover Beach. By the end of the poem you will be able to understand the summary of the poem and understand the background of the poem. Before we start the poem I would suggest you to read the text again and again so that you can memorize the poem and you are able to quote it in your exams. Matthew Arnold was an English poet and a cultural critic who worked as an inspector of school. A critic is a person who judges the merits of literary or artistic works especially the one who does so professionally. Students, literary works are the works of a writer. They can be stories, they can be plays, they can be poems. He was born in 1822 and was the eldest son of Mary Penrose Arnold and Dr. Thomas Arnold. Arnold's first work was the long poem Alaric at Rome, which was published in 1840 while he was still in school. He graduated from Oxford University in 1844. His first collection, The Strayed Reveller and Other Poems, appeared in 1849. In 1852, he published Ambidoclus on Etna and Other Poems. Now, I'll tell you something about the poem. Written in 1851, it was inspired by Matthew Arnold's visit with his wife to south coast of England where the white cliffs of Dover stand just 22 miles from the coast of France. As you can see in this picture, the Strait of Dover separates United Kingdom from the rest of continental Europe. The distance between Dover and France here is just 22 miles. That is why on a clear day it is possible to see the white cliffs of Dover from France and the coast of France from Dover. In this picture from France you can see white cliffs of Dover. These children are the White Cliffs of Dover. The speaker in the poem begins with the romanticization of natural landscape but later on moves to lament the loss of religious or spiritual faith. Romanticization means to talk about something in a way that makes it sound better than it normally is and lament means to express sadness or feeling sorry about something. Students, when the poem begins, the speaker in the poem gives a very beautiful description of the landscape on a moonlit night. But as the poem progresses, the speaker talks about the loss of faith in God. As the poem progresses, the loss of faith is then substituted with the love and faith the lovers have for each other. Now, I'll tell you the summary of the poem. One night, the speaker stood near the window of his room. He observed the calm and tranquil sea, the full tide. The entire French coast was bathed in the moonlight, which shone dimly and then disappeared. He could also see the extended cliffs of England that were glimmering. The speaker was enchanted by the beautiful view of the Dover Beach and asked someone, presumably his beloved, to experience the sweet sound of air. He drew her attention to the roar-like sound of the pebbles drawn back and flung by the waves. The continuous rhythm created by the waves and the pebbles produced a melancholic 
and everlasting music which created a mood of despondence. In this melancholic state of mind, the speaker was reminded of the Greek tragedy writer Sophocles, who was reminded of human suffering through the ebb and flow of waves on the Aegean Sea. The speaker was no different. The sounds of the waves in the northern sea made him thoughtful. In the next stanza, the speaker has compared the world with the sea. According to him, the people in the world were once full of faith. Now, the sound of the retreating waves and the pebbles thrown on the shore seem to be that of a long drawn deep melancholy and weariness in life. The decline of faith has led to a lot of confusion, fears, troubles and uncertainties around the world. In the last stanza, the speaker, along with his beloved, made a promise to each other that they would be true to one another through thick and thin. The seemingly beautiful world has neither joy nor love nor any certainty about anything. It is short of peace. Today, in such a competitive world, people are fighting a mysterious battle against unknown rivals. The speaker feels that the battle is futile. The struggles and the fights put up by the human beings are all futile. They will end nowhere but in darkness and in gloom. The speaker urges his beloved that they should be true to each other in a world devoid of joy, love, light, certitude, peace and help for pain. The poem ends on a pessimistic note. The world seems dark and confusing. To understand the poem better, we must understand the background of the poem. So, open your reverie workbooks at page number 134. Darwin's Theory of Evolution and the Victorian Crisis of Faith Students, Victorian era is referred to as the time when Queen Victoria ruled England. And at that time, the theory of evolution that was proposed by Charles Darwin. So, the Victorian era, that is from 1837 to 1901, is generally associated with the crisis of faith. What is crisis? Crisis is a time of intense difficulty or danger. So, Crisis of faith that was caused by new scientific discoveries, especially the publication of Charles Darwin's revolutionary book titled On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection in 1859. We all have heard about Charles Darwin's theory of evolution and the proposition of survival of the fittest. It introduced a scientific theory stating that biological specimens including humans evolved over the course of generations through a process of natural selection. In other words, it contradicted existing religious beliefs and scientific knowledge of the Victorians. Before this theory came, the people believed what was taught in the Bible. According to the existing religious beliefs, God created man directly from clay image by breathing life into him. Breathing his life into him means that the basic characteristics of people are derived from similar characteristics of God. The qualities of wisdom, emotions and feelings and other such qualities which a man possesses are actually the qualities of God. So, according to Bible, 
man was created by god but when charles darwin came with the theory of evolution it contradicted what was taught in the bible so people were in a fix many of them lost their faith in god many theologians began to find out the compatibility between darwin's theory and christian doctrines now who are theologians a theologian is a person who engages in the study of the nature of god and religious beliefs that is a theologian is a person who studies about god and religion compatibility means ability to exist or occur together without problems or conflict and doctrines are set of beliefs held and taught by a church so instead of going against darwin theory many theologians started to find some connection between darwin theory and christian doctrines they adopted the view that evolution was god's method of creation so instead of going against what they did they started believing that god only created man but the way was evolution others argued that darwinism was compatible only with atheism compatible means able to exist or occur together without problems or conflict and what is atheism disbelief or lack of belief in existence of god or gods so there were those who opposed darwinism saying that it could be believed only by those people who did not believe in god some also resisted evolution specifically for the human species partly due to concerns that evolution could conflict with christian claims that human beings are created in the image of god so there were people who specifically contradicted evolution in the case of human species because according to him obviously it was against what was taught in the bible that man was created in the image of god so what was the result of all this it made the victorians feel that they had been suddenly abandoned by god and this led them into an era of doubt about the existing religious beliefs this is called crisis of faith so people's faith in god was shaken and that is known as crisis of faith it is against this background that matthew arnold the poet of dover beach is often described as the embodiment of victorian religious crisis embodiment means the representation of something in a visible form so matthew arnold is often described as somebody who represented the victorian religious crisis dover beach is often read as a poem that was written as a way of expressing the void left by theory of evolution what is void void means completely empty so such discoveries created an emptiness in the minds of people and it is believed that dover beach was written as a way of expressing that emptiness according to a critic in dover beach the statement the light gleams and is gone represents some kind of melancholy as felt by the victorians when they were faced with darwin's observation students i'll explain these lines to you when we are doing stanza 1 the speaker of arnold's poem tells how the sea of faith was once too at the full and round the earth's shore so here the speaker has compared faith to a sea just like a sea wraps itself around the continents and islands of the world in the same way people were also full of faith the sea of faith which was full before darwin's theory of evolution is now a long withdrawing roar that means as the sea is receding or going back the faith is also declining and the reason is 
Darwin's theory of evolution. The Victorians are suffering an internal crisis of faith and thus to survive the speaker of the poem makes a plea to his beloved that they should remain true to each other. So what is crisis? A time of intense difficulty or danger and what is plea? A request made in an urgent and emotional manner. So the emptiness that was left in the minds of people could be filled only with love. That is why the speaker in the poem requests his beloved that they should remain true to each other. Love is the only solace that can help one survive this crisis of faith. What is solace? Solace means comfort or consolation in a time of great distress or sadness. So what is the great distress at this time? The crisis of faith. And what is the only solace? That is love. Students, I hope you have understood the background of the poem. Your homework for today is to read the text and plan explanation of stanza 1 with the help of workbook.